Hi folks, here's a great update for NYC CNC. We are operational on the Torchmate 4x4 growth series. It's been a long time coming. Uh, as you see, if you watch some of the previous videos uh, to this one, uh, it took me a little while. I had to get the electrical panel updated and you can see it over there in the corner. Got a brand new panel with 200 amp service to the house. The electricians also wired up the Hypertherm 65, which is on, there, on the ground there on the left. Um, I've now got it all hooked up with the Harbor Freight air dryer. I'm, yeah, I haven't quite finished, but uh, pretty close to finishing off um, the final or permanent installation of the air system using half inch black steel pipe. Uh, for now, I've actually got the motor guard filter, the M60, hooked up at the end of the uh, tank output shat line. I'll probably move that closer to the power max, but for now, uh, it'll do. And then I set up a temporary bench, the computer over here with the height control unit and the Torchmate box. Um, and I just did my first two line cut tests. For those of you who might be new to my YouTube channel, I did a uh, extensive series on the Tor Tormach CNC milling machine. Now, forgive me in advance if I mix up Tormach and Torchmate. Um, and uh, I'm still actually doing videos on that, but my sort of approach is to sort of sh is just to show it like it is and uh, share in the successes and failures and the questions that I struggle with. I tend to focus on answering because I think hopefully like-minded people may wonder the same thing. So again, in that vein, uh, this is a PowerMax 65 by Hypertherm. It comes with 65 amp consumables. Um, I'm going to do most of my cutting on say 3 16 and quarter inch and some 3 8 inch. Everything I've read on Pirate 4x4 says 45 amps consumables are best uh, for that cutting thickness. So my first question to myself was, okay, well I have 65 amp consumables in the machine as it came and uh, upon reading to quickly confirm, you're not supposed to run 65 amp consumables at, um, at 45 amps from the machine. So I'll need to pick up some 45 amp consumables um, but to go up back to the line test, this is a CAD file that comes with the machine and it starts at the, see I guess I think this would be the top, at 130 inches a minute and then inks its way down by 10 inches a minute to the bottom one which is 10 inches per minute total and then it cuts out the whole thing I think at 40 inches a minute. Um, on the back side you can see at 130 inches a minute, not, um, not too much uh, slag but the there is a pretty severe angle to the cut and then once you got down here to the final cut at 10 inches a minute pretty horrendous but again that's okay because this was 10 inches a minute at 65 amps which is just not a good cutting recipe for 3 16 so what I did was modify the g-code file and this was my second part um, I've still got some plus I definitely still got to work on the plunging issues, uh, but one step at a time. But this I started at 140 inches a minute, and then I inked it down by five, I think, so that the slowest was maybe only 90 inches a minute. And as you can see, hardly any slag um, on the cut. Still a decent amount of bevel on some of them, but um, a heck of an improvement. So I was happy to see that step in the right direction. What I thought I'd do is uh, cut the same uh, line test that I just discussed that starts at 140 and goes down to, I think, 90, just so you can see it in action. I'll use the same piece of steel I've used to cut my other two. Again, this is the first two cuts the machine's ever made. Uh, we'll do a third. And then uh, before I muck up these 65 amp consumables too much, I thought, let's take a piece of half inch and see what happens uh, which is a more appropriate thickness for the heavier amperage consumables so let me get this piece set up and we'll uh, play a little a couple of other tips I've already learned along the way uh, don't worry about water on the plate uh, this these things are not going to be affected by it and as you'll see when it's cutting it kind of throws water all over the place so when I first started I was paranoid thinking I don't want to cause a short or something uh, not to be concerned. Another tip I learned is sometimes the consumables are actually too tight from the factory and I was told all you need to do is uh, you can loosen it and just bring it to a finger tight just barely to where it stops. You don't need to really tighten it or torque it down whatsoever. 
Um, I've already jogged over to where I'm going to set my zero point. Just to show you on the screen, you can use the control key when you're in the jog, sorry, when you've clicked on the jog, you can use the control key and go hold down right or left to jog. I find that's a lot easier than using the mouse. So I like this position, so I'm going to click set, zero all, yes, and that's going to put me in the bottom left corner to cut this piece. In the hypertherm manual, I'm on the 65 amp mild steel shielded uh, uh, consumables page, and I'm cutting 3 16 so I've got, um, I don't actually have that one set correctly yet, I should adjust that. I do have the pierce height set at uh, 150 thou, and, sorry, let's keep it in focus here, um, and I have the pierce delay set at 0.2, and I am, as you can see, I'm starting at 140 and going down by 5 inches a minute for every line, so I'm, I'm sort of, uh, you know, I'm probably, I should say at 140 in theory, that's the optimal cut, and I did set the voltage to 126. Okay, last change. I uh, set the torch to work distance to six, 60 thou, which I did by adjusting the initial cut height on the AVHC. I, I think that's the right metric to adjust. Uh, the default that uh, Torchmate says to use is 0.13, so I'm going from 0.13 to 0.06, so I hope that's right. We'll see. Okay, about to click go. Uh, one last update, I misspoke earlier, I'm starting at 150 inches a minute and working my way down by increments of 5 inches per minute per line. I misstated earlier that I was starting at 140. So here we go. Okay, so misfire, that's uh, first. Let me take a look. So fault code O-30, and before I even looked at that, I had checked my consumables, and even though earlier I said uh, they just had to be finger tight, they had loosened somehow, and I'm gonna bet that that's what, this black piece here was, was too far down, it unthreaded itself. I'm, I'm quite certain that at least contributed to the problem if it wasn't the whole problem. So let's uh, start over here. Okay, uh, small mishap. I thought I had set it at 0.06 initial cut height. I forgot to click OK on the AVHC box, so when I actually tried to run that, it uh, pierced, as you can see, the hole there, and then it started dragging the material. So that's too low, at least for now. So I moved it back up to 0 0.10. So let's uh, go ahead and try this again. Okay, so that turned out okay. It's, uh, I'll have to take a closer look to see the difference between the second one I cut and this one, the difference between being a lower uh, initial cut height. But, um, you know, not a ton of slag on the bottom side. Um, but, uh, you know, rather than focus on more video, I need to go back and start to learn more about the cuts. I'll hold off on that thicker plate for now and uh, be back when I've learned a little bit more. Thanks, folks.